the uh, regular meeting for the uh, Ardle County Board of Commission for December 16th uh, is coming <coughs> to order. The invocation uh, this evening will be delivered by uh, Vice Chairman Norman. Love to bow, please. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity just to be here. We thank you for the work we will do tonight for the citizens of our county. Lord, bless the troops that are home and those that are far away, that you keep an eye on them as they travel home during the holidays, and those who don't get to travel stay over across cities. Thank you that you bless them, Lord, and you bless their families. Again, bless this night, and then we pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the pledge to lead. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Mr. Chairman, there are no adjustments coming from the staff. Okay. Thank you. Any adjustments from commission members? Okay. There are no special recognitions or awards on the agenda tonight. Uh, first item, under item six, appointments before the board, a request from the Iredell Arts Council for permission to place a sculpture on the old jail property. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, thank you for uh, the opportunity to present this request. Uh, we thank you for everything you do for the Ireland Arts Council, uh, which we could not do what we do without your help. Um, the request is to place a um, steel sculpture uh, of a uh, non-objective nature, more of a formal uh, piece uh, in the corner of Court Street and meeting to kind of uh, make a landmark of the arts the function of the Arts Council uh, under the uh, old jail building. Uh, the, 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 the sculpture is also of a temporary nature. It would only be there for a year uh, and then removed and replaced uh, by another piece uh, uh, under the approval of the uh, county commissioners and all the other uh, uh, agencies uh, and organizations uh, involved in government, in city government too. This matter was uh, discussed earlier on our pre-agenda meeting. Uh, are there any comments or questions from members of the board? Entertain a motion from a member of the board. Chairman, I move we would grant this request. Are there any comments on the motion? Okay. All, op all, all in favor of the motion from Commissioner Johnson, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Second item on appointments before the board is a request from the Fraternal Order of Police to erect a monument at the old courthouse site. Mr. Ron Wyatt. Good evening, gentlemen. Fraternal Order of Police would like to construct a monument for officers that have served in Iredell County regardless of which agency that were killed in the line of duty. Their names would be on the monument. We would have a couple verses from the Bible also indicated on the mo uh, written on the monument. Uh, we definitely would, would work with the county staff to follow any recommendations that you all have on placement approval of wording before it's etched, et cetera. Is there any uh, comments or questions from the board? Yeah, I was, um, you know, first of all, I would say that conceptually we're not, I don't think there's any opposition to, for there to be some sort of recognition. Um, personally, though, I, I really would like to avoid something that looks like a tombstone. If okay. Um, you know, I, in our pre-agenda meeting, we were talking about, you know, what constitutes art and 
all that kind of stuff. And I freely admit <clears throat> my, my tastes are old-fashioned, and some people may say they're outdated. You know, I think appropriate art is George Washington on a horse, you know. Um, but, but to, to uh, do some, something that honors the fallen law enforcement officers is fine, but I, I just don't want it to look like they're buried there, okay? So, um, so I, I would say that would, you know, I have a concern about that. And then also, I just think in the front of, in the front, we're pretty limited in space. So I, I can agree to the concept, but I, I would like to see some more details before mm -hmm. I buy, buy in on anything beyond that. Mr. Wyant, we see here that says we prefer the old courthouse site, but um, do you think that's the most appropriate place? Um, because obviously over at the other courthouse is more, lends itself more to law enforcement. Most of the names that would be on this monument, this is where they worked and served during their careers. Um, and, and considering the new courthouse site, uh, whether it be five years, 10 years, 15 years, we expect there to be some construction and some renovation done on that site and speaking with the clerk of court and some other elected officials instead of it being a county burden once a monument's installed uh, we we fully expect to pay the complete tab with all of those factors discussed amongst our committee we just felt like this site would be the most appropriate and uh, uh, walking the sites with the county maintenance director uh, robert woody we found a couple locations here that we think would not mess with any aesthetics of what's already on site. And if anything could even add to a couple areas to where it, it would look aesthetically sound. And that all those reasons together is why we felt this site would be better than going over there. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Any further comment? Well, the chair will entertain a uh, motion. Motion to approve. Okay. What, hold on a second. What are we approving? The, uh, the request to erect a monument. Uh, can, can we? I, I, I don't think I'm. I think. Um, excuse me. Go ahead. I, I was going to say. <clears throat> how about if we we accept the. It's, uh, I mean, I, I would be in favor of to accept the concept, but um, but not. I'm not ready to cart blank say they can put anybody can put anything on these grounds without us knowing specifically where and what. And and right now, you know, we're not there yet. We well, just said he walked through with the our our county employee. Yeah. You looked at the place. You looked at the place. Yeah. Where is it, that place? Robert Woody. No, where is the place? Well, not that's Robert Woody. It's okay. right. The first option was right beside the door in the adjacent building going into Nethkin Law Firm. There's a 10 by 15 area there. If, if you're walking up the walkway toward the courthouse front from Center Street, it would be off to your left, kind of in the shadows now. And I do understand your concerns and, and have no qualms with those. And, and by all means, before maybe we get the full approval, we're, we're in complete agreement that each step of this needs to be approved. You all see it ahead of time so that it does benefit the overall picture of what we're trying to do out there instead of just something being installed. Mr. Chairman, if I may inquire, Mr. Norman. Mr. Norman, I'm assuming that your mo inherent in your motion was a direction to the staff to uh, collaborate with these folks and find a mutually agreed upon area? That's correct. Okay. That's the intent of the motion, and I support it, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So the, the issue is uh, supporting the concept, but the execution of the concept is subject to review and ultimately a vote of this board to approve uh, whatever the uh, final proposal is in terms of aesthetics and placement. 
Yes, sir. And, and specifically, just so we're all on the same page, I, I agree with Commissioner Robertson. We don't want a tombstone out there looking like somebody was buried in it. Well, with those uh, elaborations on uh, Vice Chairman Norman's uh, motion, the motion to stand. Uh, any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Mr. Wyatt. Appreciate y'all serving the community, too. Thank you, sir, for your service. The next item is a request from the City of States for, for matching funds in preparation of a new airport layout plan and environmental assessment. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm David Courier. I'm the Planning and Development Director for the City of Statesville. The uh, Statesville Regional Airport is housed in the Planning Department. And what we are requesting tonight on Memo 3 is your participation in 5% of funding for the latest grant, state grant, received for the airport development. The, uh, the state grant is in the amount of $261,540. It requires a local match of 10% or $29,060 for a total package of 290000 The uh, items to be addressed in this state grant are the airport layout plan, or the ALP. This is a, um, the, the ALP, or the layout plan, is basically, a, it's a heavily engineered future of the airport with all the technical detail and data included in the, the layout plan you have the layout drawing of the airport. You have airspace drawings, uh, approach surface drawings, terminal area, hangar areas, uh, land use, uh, right of way or runway departure surfaces, and uh, property maps, runway protection areas, etc. It's an extremely detailed document. It is required of every airport, and it's time to update for Statesville. The second part of the grant is for an environmental assessment for the runway 1028, which is the primary runway for a south parallel taxiway. The uh, FAA is requiring the construction of a south parallel to conform with our new instrument landing systems, or they were installed in 05. And it is an extreme safety factor for all the uh, corporate jet craft who are housed or hangered south of the runway, they have to taxi across active to get to the taxiways for takeoff operations. So we are requesting, uh, as we have for many years, your partnership in uh, sharing the five or the 10% local match. Is there, is there any discussion or comments from members of the board? Mr. Chairman, I'll just add to what Mr. Courier said. I think this is probably the most comprehensive airport layout plan that we've had. We requested to the state that we'd be allowed to extend it as far as uh, land use further out from the airport than we previously had, and they agreed to fund that. So I think it'll be a document to be, be very beneficial to us in future planning for the airport. Uh, Mr. Smith, what is the uh, budgetary line item that this will be uh, coming out of? This would come out of uh, economic development, Statesville Airport line item, um, and I think a we could prepare a budget amendment based on your allocation tonight if you'd like to do that. Any further discussion? <clears throat> None. Uh, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I would move we approve this request. The motion is uh, made by Commissioner Johnson to approve the request. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, and if you'll prepare a budget amendment to the uh, January 6th meeting. I'll take that as a yes. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, the uh, final item on appointments before the board is a request from the City of Statesville for partial funding of a new Statesville Regional Airport Manager position. Mr. Curry. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, if you haven't been to the Statesville Airport uh, in, in the last uh, 10 years, you, you would be absolutely amazed at what has happened out there. The, um, the airport, basically, we have the 7,006-foot paved runway. It's rated at over 98,000 pounds for dual axle strength for weight of aircraft. It is 100 feet wide. It has high-intensity runway lighting. And the most important feature is the ILS, or instrument landing system, that brings pilots in in inclement weather. So we're basically open 24-7. Uh, you don't have to divert to Hickory or another ILS station as you used to. That has greatly enhanced the economic development uh, measures out there. We probably, well, we not probably, we do have one of the best, three best general aviation facilities in the state. And our main competitor is, is Concord, which is not too far away. The um, Statesville Council appoints an airport commission to uh, work with the, uh, the staff on the airport development. The, this is an appointed board, and the county commissioners appoint uh, a member to this airport commission. Commissioner Johnson has been on for a, a long time and, and certainly is not currently serving and has served as chair of the uh, commission. Back in August of 2014, the airport commissioner, or I lost my staff member in my department who attended to airport matters. And the airport commission at their meeting suggested that we seriously take a look at hiring a full-time airport manager or employee. Up until that time, the city basically put or budgeted roughly a half at the most of a position to tending to the airport. And I can tell you that, uh, and I started that in 78, I can tell you that uh, this Statesville Regional Airport has greatly outgrown a uh, half a staff member's attention. And uh, I'll kind of show you what we've done there. So the Airport Commission did recommend this to the City Council. Earlier this month, the City Council, after hearing the presentations on the uh, potential staff member, basically made the following motion. They made a motion that the, um, we, we have an airport description which is in your packets or a manager's description with a salary range. The City Council in the motion said to the staff, we would like to hire a, a professional seasoned airport manager. Do not look at the bottom of the uh, salary level, the entry level. The staff has the flexibility to go from bottom to top. Hire somebody who can hit the road running and, and do the justice to the airport. They also ask, as we are here tonight, that the commissioners from the August Airport Commission meeting uh, consider funding uh, one-third of the position. The, uh, they requested that the funding uh, be for a five-year period so we can get some stability to the, to the program. And they also instructed the staff that we were allowed to go ahead and advertise for the position but not to hire the position until a marketing study is done. The council is, uh, I guess, and it, it maybe to put it in lay terms, they're looking at taking the airport to a higher level. And they want a marketing plan and they would like you to participate in that. We'll come back to you later on that when we have numbers. The um, you have a copy in your packet of the airport manager's description. You will see that there are a number of uh, references to the marketing aspect, which was brought up at the airport commission. 
Mr. Smith, um, in his memo to the board, uh, put basically a 50%, and I probably gave him that figure for a marketing value. Um, in my reassessment, including enormous amounts of grant work and grant monitoring, which in better the airport, which is a marketing tool, um, I'm of the opinion that it's more along the lines of 66% or two thirds of this position would be dealing with marketing the airport. Um, an interesting feature with the airport, and I'll just tell you, some of you have been around and, and seen this, and know Commissioner Johnson has, but in 1998, the total tax value, the aircraft value at Statesville Municipal Airport then was $15,900,000. In 2012, $251 million of taxable value. That's how the airport has grown. It started with uh, Dale Earnhardt and Champion Air. Of course, when Lowe's Corporate came in, major boost. But as, as the race teams and the, the hangared aircraft have evolved, I mean, we went from 15.9 to 251 million. That's a success story. And the interesting thing is that's just the beginning. With full-time leadership, direction, and marketing, uh, who knows where it can go. The um, interesting thing, and this is one corporate jet, and we have a number of them out there, delivers the same tax value as roughly 100 households or homes in Iredell County. So one jet equals 100 households or household uh, in Iredell. The tax value is exponential, and the service delivery on that jet is nominal. So it's great economic development. I mean, you've seen the Lowe's numbers. The um, I, I guess when when I look at it, and I get kind of excited with the airport. But if you build a, a, a mile of road, you can go a mile. You build a mile of runway, which we have as partners you've got the whole world at your fingertips. So we would like you to consider uh, funding one third, and Mr. Smith has said a fixed number, one third of the benefits and the salary for a full-time airport manager. I did mention about roughly 66% marketing. Um, we do not know from beginning to end of salary or low to high where this person will come in. We just don't know that. But I can tell you that council has said, hire the best you can get. So with that, uh, I'll try to answer any questions. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have council member Mike Johnson here and assistant manager Lynn Smith, if you have any questions of them. Okay. We uh, discussed uh, this matter at the pre-agenda meeting, uh, and Commissioner Johnson, as a member of the Airport Commission, uh, uh, brought us up to speed on a lot of the background information. And uh, this is a, a great collaborative effort and endeavor uh, that's a force multiplier and, and an enhancer for our economic development uh, and our tax base. So uh, we're very uh, pleased to be uh, joined at the hip with you in this process. Um, is there any discussion on this item? And you said there was, what, $215 million of, is that the figure you used, yeah. 215? Um, Ms. Robinson, we, um, in, o in 2012, $251 million worth of taxable value. Taxable? Ad was it taxable? I mean, because if we've given an economic incentive of 70 or 80 percent, that's not taxable. The only incentive we've given was to uh, lose. Okay. So, so the rest of them are 100% taxable? That, that's earned out by now, I'm sure. Well, let's see, it was the second five years. We're pretty close to that being paid out. Okay. Um, I was going to ask, uh, would, would you entertain 
Um, if 66% of this person's uh, job is to, bring, um, is to bring aircraft to be stationed at the airport and put on our tax rolls, that, that part of their, their measurement is for their effectiveness is, uh, is that, <clears throat> and, and, and I'm not going to give you a number, but that number sh should be enough to at least cover their salary. And, and benefits. So, you know, if you know, saying that somebody goes goes out and they get grants, all that kind of stuff for the airport, B building the airport just to have a big airport isn't what we're after. It's is to get taxable value and hopefully to get commerce in Iredell County so that we have jobs and economic activity and stuff. But I would say if, if two thirds of this person's job is to get is to get more aircraft stationed here, then I, I would encourage you strongly to put a quantitative goal on there as it relates to taxable um, taxable tax base and and it be some percentage or all of their salary at, at a minimum no, we we can work on that I yeah. uh, we, we have, uh, like say, with the grant programs, any improvement that's made out there really embetters the airport, which makes it more usable, marketable. But then we should see that in the increase in tax value. So that, that's, that's the, the ultimately, I mean, that's the whole reason we're supposed to be doing this, right? So to me, that would be the ultimate measure of, you know, is, is it working, you know? Not just is this person working, but is the concept working? Is are we getting that much additional taxable value in? Because I mean, not only have we spent a lot of money, but the federal government spent a tremendous amount of money. I think one thing that um, will be extremely important is the outcome of the marketing assessment and plan. As I said, we're we're looking at trying to take the airport to a higher level, and and there's plenty of room to to do so. Um, whether we get into air carrier type operations, um, you know, it, it's all part of the, the plan that's that's coming up. And council wants to uh, see the plan. Of course, as I mentioned, they'd like you to share in some of the cost of that um, to, to kind of set the, the uh, goals and objectives for the airfield. But the primary base is to to build, as we have done since 1998, that tax base. We've done an outstanding job and feel we can continue that. Mr. Chairman, if I may, there were two primary concerns. I'll just add to what Mr. Curtis said. It's two primary concerns that prompted in my mind, and I think collectively, the mind of the airport commission. And it was certainly the economic development, but to be honest, and this is not to be critical of anyone, uh, Mr. Collins did a great job, but that was a part-time job for him. <laughs> And as far as just looking after the day-to-day -day operational maintenance of the airfield and responding to concerns of tenants, that the demands of, of that aspect of the job outgrew a part-time position in my mind years ago. When what was beginning to happen, there was, there was an unacceptable, in our mind, unacceptable time period between time that an issue arose at the airport and that matter was addressed and that's not being critical it was a part-time job for him and he just simply didn't have the time to take care of that valuable asset that we had in an expeditious manner so that was the first thing that prompted, prompted it and the second thing was was the marketability of the airport we we've got a tremendous asset out there that we think we can market we think we will market and as uh, Mr. Courier said, really at the state level, when uh, when we speak, uh, the D the aviation wing of the DOT, they pretty much listen to us because we we are well respected over there, and uh, they have a representative regularly at our meetings. If I could, probably maybe a little difference with Mr. Courier, I think initially. A disproportionate amount of this person's time will be spent on tidying up loose ends at the airport that exist now. I think he's exactly right. That job will change over time that it increasingly 
more more of his time would be taken up with the marketing of the airport. And I would think it's at some point, if this thing grows the way I and others envision it, I think you'll have a situation where this this person will be a management position and a marketing director, and they'll have someone under them taking care of the day-to-day -day maintenance operation of the airport. I, th I think it has the potential to go there. We just fear that with the uh, the time we're dedicating to the air field now, as limited as it is, that uh, we've reached a plateau and we've stalled out. And if we're gonna we're gonna get the maximum potential out of that airport, then we have to invest some money in, in uh, continue to develop the airport and market it. I think over time, I don't know how much longer I'll be around here, but uh, I think in a few years somebody will look back and say this was a good move on our part. Any further discussion, comments? Uh, I would say that I, I think uh, that balance between the operational requirements that you have uh, that uh, Commissioner Johnson has outlined are, you know, that's probably your highest priority initially to, to address. Uh, and as you move down the timeline, then, then that job description, as, as things are moving along like a well-oiled machine because, his, because of his daily presence and a background in general aviation, and uh, that, that whole operational aspect, I would expect that it will shift more, as you've indicated, towards the marketing aspect. I would, I would say it would be helpful, and, and don't sell yourself short, in terms of developing your measures of effectiveness as far as what the airport brings. It's uh, not just the increase in the tax base based on the uh, aircraft, or the hangars that are directly associated with the operation of the airport and bringing business into the airport per se. But it also, and I would, I would uh, uh, encourage as you develop the marketing aspect of this to emphasize as well uh, how the, uh, the airport is uh, integrated into the overall uh, economic development and marketing aspect for bringing business generally to Iredell County uh, and its uh, municipalities uh, because uh, not everybody's going to build a hangar but just having the ability to fly in, visit a plant and fly out is going to provide uh, an additional reason to choose Iredell County and so there, there needs, you need to connect the dots or take credit for where that is identified as a reason for a uh, business locating here that, that uh, you get appropriate credit for that, so to speak. So, um, uh, the Chair will entertain a motion from uh, any of the members. Mr. Chairman, I would move we grant this request uh, for a lump sum of $22,000 per year up to five years. Uh, And that uh, we ask for uh, we ask for uh, we ask for an annual report of the success mm -hmm. of this person by guidelines adopted by the airport commission and the city council. Uh, I, I don't make that demand with any hesitancy. I really believe with the adoption of this land use plan, its approval. And if we exploit this asset, I think somebody else is going to be sitting here in 10 years with easily a half a billion dollars worth of tax base out there. Good. Okay. Motion is on the table from, from uh, Commissioner Johnson. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much, Mr. Courier. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. There are, uh, that concludes the appointments before the board. Uh, there are no public hearings uh, on the schedule this evening. Uh, for administrative matters, uh, many of which were reviewed at the pre-agenda meeting, I'd ask uh, the county manager, Mr. Smith, to summarize 
uh, those matters which are on the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Item A is a request from the, Health, the Department of Social Services to recognize allocation of funding to hire personnel and approve budget amendment number 19. Item B is a request from the Finance Department for approval of professional services of a professional services agreement with Pope McMillan Cote Sheik and Sheik. Item C is a request from the Health Department to accept grant funds from NC PHP and R in the amount of ten thousand dollars and approve budget number budget amendment number twenty. Item D is a request from the Health Department to accept twelve thousand three hundred and eighty-five dollars in immunization action plan funds from the state and approve num budget amendment number 21. Item E is a request from the health department to accept the healthy communities grant and, and budget amendment number 22 for $13,757. Item G is a request from the clerk to the board to appoint a voting delegate to the NCACC legislative goals conference. H is a request from the Tax Administration for approval of November refunds and releases. And I apologize, I did not mention item I, the request for approval of the minutes for December 1, 2014. So we'll have to have a separate motion. We'll, on we'll treat that separately. Okay. Thank you. Is there a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda? So moved. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those, those opposed, like sign. None. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, that uh, on the administrative matters, item F, uh, request from Harmony Volunteer Fire Department to use previously approved ISO funds to purchase rescue equipment. It's under memo 10. Okay. And Mr. David Salibi will present uh, that along with Chief. Thank you, Board, and Merry Christmas to each of you. On April 3rd of 2012, the Board of Commissioners approved the budget amendment number 43 for the appropriation of $69,522 to Harmony Volunteer Fire Department for the purchase of aerial truck equipment to, in order to meet Insurance Service Office, ISO, minimum requirements for ISO ratings. The ISO improvements did not use all of the approved funds. Uh, there is a balance of approximately $23,000 uh, that was not used at that time. Tonight, Chief Gene Powers of Harmony Volunteer Fire Department is here to request the balance of the approved funds to be used to purchase rescue tools. In your board packets uh, tonight, you uh, was provided to you a copy of the April 3rd, 2012 minutes, budget amendment number 43, and Harmony's letter of request outlining their equipment needs. I will say, uh, I would like to go on to uh, just to cover the memo. <clears throat> Based on the board's uh, clear direction on May 6th, which was uh, not to create uh, any new rescue districts in the county. And also, at the time th that the funds were approved for Harmony, it was the understanding that the funds would be used for ISO improvements. With the current direction of the Board of Commissioners, staff does not recommend approval of this request. Thank you. Uh, Chief Flowers? Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you for letting us come tonight and hearing us. Thank you for being here. Uh, do you have anything that you would like to add to uh, uh, Mr. Sleevy's comments? Uh, no, sir. I appreciate your time. Okay. Uh, are there questions from uh, members of the board? Where's um, the, the, you've asked to spend the money on some of this rescue equipment. It, is, does this equipment have a direct impact on your ISO rating? Well, it's... Uh, Is it needed to lower your ISO rating? No, sir. Okay. I've got one question for Chief. <clears throat> In your area, what 
are the local rescue squads not doing that you need this equipment to provide? It's like I've talked to the chief of the rescue squad. We are not here to replace him or his membership. We just have uh, 51 members and 30 of them are seeking or have acquired to be rescue techs. And as uh, daytime staffing is short, Volunteer help, rescue, and fire departments are dwindling, and new applicants don't come out of the woodwork. So we're just there to help our neighbor and provide a service at a higher level than we have in the past. And Harmony Fire Department does have the largest response area in Iowa County. So we have trained personnel at RTs in the northern end of Ardell County to help and assist the rescue. It is happening at this time in other departments. And Harmony was one of the last. So that's why we started doing it. And the money being left over is why we requested it instead of letting it go back into general fund. Does the Harmony Fire Department have a specifically defined rescue district? We have a fire service area in our contract. But to answer that question, no, we do not have a rescue response area. Chief Powers, let let me share you a concern I have, and then we'll give you an opportunity to address it. Um, as I said earlier, the, the decision by this board to create rescue service districts for the fire departments in the southern end of the county was, was driven by demographics. I think everybody on this board will attest to the fact that we didn't wake up one morning deciding that we were going to do away with a rescue squad. We just had to, we had to respond to, to a need in that southern end of the county. When we did that, we said that we would not create any more rescue districts. In, in saying that, it was inherent in that statement that, that we would not compromise the integrity of the service area or the financial viability of the rescue squads, which are funding funded based on area served and call volume. Um, so that was a statement that we weren't going to create any more rescue districts. And I, and I make a distinction here between the fire department doing, running rescue calls and creating a rescue district. This is a distinction that was, I'm not sure, made clearly in regard to statesful's initiating uh, rescue response. In my mind, though, my concern is, is that in order to maintain the integrity of that service district, a pretty good trip wire that would keep you from violating that commitment the board has is the restriction of ISO money for ISO purposes. That this request is a request that asks us to use ISO money for rescue services. So although we haven't violated the rescue district, that's the first tripwire in my mind to where we're beginning to compromise the integrity of that rescue service district. Am, am I over-exaggerating that concern, or can you help us feel better about that? I'm not trying to no, sir, I do, I do not have an argument for that. Okay. But at this time, we are responding to the wreck or to the house fire. Mm -hmm. And forcible entry tools are a great asset when someone's life is dependent on it. And there is no other rescue tools there. They might be a rescue person that was in the area that responded and got there even before our fire trucks. So when the rescue tools got there, you would have the trained personnel from the rescue or the fire department to gain the entry into that 
situation in a timely matter rather than waiting on a further up the road or further down the road depending on where it is in the district and the call it's all about time my, you know, my concern o over over this request is um, is first of all it's very difficult to argue against putting putting tools in the hands of people who are trying to, to s save lives benefit the community often with no compensation okay so that being said to me this argument is really about the fact that this board levied a one cent tax for use specifically to lower help fire departments lower the ISO rating to me it's it's I, I'm, that's what we made a promise with the taxpayers. I'm going to take money out of your pocket. We're going to apply it for a, a very specific, finite purpose so that in the end, your homeowner's insurance, your fire insurance, if you live in those districts that ended up getting an improved rating, that you would basically get your money back. It was a, it was a financial as well as a public safety decision. It, it, and, and what we didn't say was we'll use that money to lower ISO ratings and do stuff, other stuff that we think would be good in the, in the, in the emergency services. So from that perspective, uh, I'm against granting the request. Um, however, and, and we discussed this uh, at pre-agenda and, and, and we've discussed this many times over the past couple of years, no. As as Iredell County changes, as the people change, as the requirements that the state has for, you know, who who can squirt water on a fire, who can uh, reach in and touch somebody uh, to provide some sort of aid at an accident scene, who can do, um, who can use uh, those various pieces of equipment, the the training requirements have changed a good bit. And and uh, and also the 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 fact is there's a lot more uh, a lot more demands placed on somebody who's going to so-called volunteer their services. All of these have changed changed how we deliver um, emergency services in the county. And for that reason, our policy and the way that we operate it and all will probably evolve and change in the future. And we can address that. And we can look at that, and we can always we can challenge the way that are, the way that we're doing that, and we can challenge our policy. I think that's a totally separate question from the question that's being asked tonight, which is basically, can we take ISO funds that that your department graciously and smartly didn't you didn't you didn't take the approach of you gave us X amount of dollars, so we're going to spend every nickel of it? Okay, you were very thrifty with it. And you've asked, hey, well, can we take some of the money that we saved and, and spend it on something else? And, and as much as I'd like to give you a gift to reward you for not spending all the money that was placed at your disposal, the fact of the matter is, is that money should go back into that fund that if your department can't use it, another department, can't, department can use that money to help lower or maintain or maintain their improved ISO rating. So, um, so I, I am inclined not to support the request. That doesn't mean that that I'm blanket forever against you having that equipment. Okay, it's just about where you get the money for that equipment, and and it doesn't. I don't think it should come from this particular fund funding source. At this time, could I make another request? Certainly. And I guarantee you to be an ISO coverage money. Us and Long Hickory have been planning for several years now to put a dry hydrant in Mr. Richard and Ralph Renniger's pond. The money has already been approved. Could we take it out of this money and leave the other money in the ISO money? Since this is going to go back to general fund, we take all the money out of this from us, earmarked to us, and pay for that project. Uh, yeah, I, that would be I, ISO money. I don't know money. where that project is relative to all the other projects. It's already been approved for the ISO. Mr. Sleevey, can you? The Countywide Fire Tax Board uh, 
has a process for funding dry hydrants, mm -hmm. and hydrants are a part of ISO improvements. Whether they're dry hydrants, which is in the pond in the north end of the county, or whether they are hydrants that are piped to a water system. Both are ISO improvements, and the county has a process for that. Uh, and I think that uh, that particular hydrant request has already been approved. That approval comes through the fire marshal's office. So that is a request, and, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure I would have to, since we don't have, currently have an active county fire tax board, be, I, I can work with the uh, finance office to... Uh, if, if, do we have an idea what this dry, dry hydrant cost? I mean, is that a hard number? Or? If I can remember correctly, it was around $12,000. If we have a process for prioritizing where we put the dry hydrants, let the money go back into the fund and let the priority, let, let the process work. Otherwise, what we're basically doing is earmarking, earmarking stuff and we're bypassing the process. And if that's the case, then, then, then all we've done is we've negated the process. Let's forget it and just let people come up here and ask us to, to fund their project. And uh, I appreciate what you're saying, but they did earn this money. And n no, and the taxpayers paid the money. No, but and they paid the money based upon what we promised them that I, we would do with that money. But by lowering their rate, they earned the sixty-nine thousand dollars. I totally agree that that we should not fund something that is not an ISO-related function with this money. But if they had made this request previous to this, then the $12,000 would, be, would have been funded. I mean, they are rewarded for lowering their insurance. That's why they had money left, and, and that's why they have, they didn't spend all of it. They spent some of it on ISO-related, and they didn't, have enough projects to spend it on, but Mr. Power says they got a dry hydrant that they could spend in their district, and it is their fire department. It is on the line between us and Long Hickory, where there is no water, and uh, I'd say in the future there won't be no water lines. Well, and we can't even train unless we use pond water anymore in the northern end of the county. If I could ask Mr. Salivi. The current quest aside, had uh, Chief Flowers come to you and said, we've spent uh, $53,000 of our $69,000 allotted fund, and we have a $12,000 dry hydrant we want to uh, complete that project on, which is ISO related, would that matter have even come before this board? Or, or would you have handled that in-house as a uh, simply accounting for the funds being used? Well, again, we have a process that we would have normally used with, a county, with an active countywide fire tax board. Uh, since we don't have that, we kind of rely on our fire marshal's office to make those approvals or, or up, approve that funding. Um, I would say with, without an active countywide fire tax board to say yes or no on a hydrant and using the existing process, uh, we probably would have considered that and that would not have come before you because that would be a valid ISO improvement. In, in that case, it's not an issue. Yeah. Correct. Uh, uh, based on the fact that we do not have a, a committee to make that determination. In that case, that's a separate issue we need to address. I would, uh, my, I would think at this point we would uh, deny the request and give some direction, uh, remand this back to Mr. Sleeby and the fire marshal and let them come forward with a recommendation on this dry hydrant, Mr. Chairman. Be. Is, is there any further comment or is there anyone uh, in the general public that would want to be heard on this matter? Hearing none and no further discussion, uh, Chair would entertain a motion. Uh, would you? I, I would move that we deny this request because uh, of the concerns expressed earlier in our discussion and that we remand it back to Mr. Mm -hmm. Sleeby 
and our fire marshal and let them come back with a recommendation on uh, Mr. Power's request for a dry hydrant That's fair enough. at a subsequent meeting. Okay. Um, okay, motion on the floor. Any further discussion? There being none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Thank you, sir. Uh, Chief Flowers, I, I appreciate your uh, sending the request up. It does highlight, you know, an ongoing issue that we are going to have as there uh, are expanded capabilities and requirements and uh, needs of the general public um, in terms of integrating uh, our, all of our emergency response capabilities whether it's EMS, rescue, fire, and uh, even uh, dispatch through ECOM. Um, there's a lot of, uh, when, when you uh, address an area, one area over here, sometimes there's second and third over effects that affect other organizations and other capabilities. And what we owe the taxpayers is the most uh, effective use of the resources we have that are uh, uh, required to do the job and to uh, support our people that are volunteering and also who are uh, employed either part-time or full-time to support those volunteers. To balance that together with the effective, uh, the efficiencies that we owe the taxpayers so that we don't have unnecessary duplication uh, unnecessary uh, response uh, based on the uh, level of uh, whatever the uh, circumstances they're responding to. Um, that whole process, and I think uh, it was highlighted by uh, uh, Commissioner Bowles, uh, you know, is going to be changing, and, and we are adopting a, a process of uh, strategic planning where we can look out over. Uh, the future and, and look at what our needs are in a number of different areas and one of those is our public safety and justice area and uh, Commissioner Bowles and myself will be working with a task force of, of all the stakeholders that have have uh, Have a piece of the pie so that we can get everybody around the table and we can understand the real issues involved and so that uh, we aren't making decisions with, uh, that are, are without seeing the big picture and without all the facts and understanding how uh, there are second and third order effects out there and how we, at the end of the day, can uh, deliver to the taxpayer the most efficient overall response system out there. So. Um, we would encourage and we'll be asking for uh, participation in that process and uh, so that we can get uh, the, the best result across the board to posture us going forward. So uh, thank you for uh, uh, the volunteerism and the, the sacrifice that your memberships and indeed all of our uh, emergency services personnel uh, particularly those volunteers who do so without remuneration uh, and answer calls at 3 o'clock in the morning uh, or just before they sit down for Thanksgiving dinner uh, here at Tone and they're out the door and, and they get cold turkey instead of uh, hot turkey and dressing. So uh, thank you for all the, uh, the benefits you bring to this community in ensuring our, the safety of our citizens. And we will, you know, it, I think you can see that there's a concern over making sure that we are uh, maintaining fiscal integrity in terms of what we've identified as a need for the taxpayer uh, and, and ensuring that that's executed consistent with that. And I believe that if you work out with uh, uh, Mr. Salibi, uh, as you've suggested, this dry hydrant uh, need, then uh, that will uh, should uh, sounds like it should be falling within the purview of the intent of those those dollars. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Final item on the uh, administrative matters is the. Uh,
approval of the minutes for the December 1st, 2014 um, meeting. Uh, is there a motion? Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Um, announcement of vacancies occurring on boards of commissions, boards and commissions. There are no announcements that I'm aware of. Appointments to boards and commissions. Uh, there are two appointments to the Iredell County Board of Health. Um, Mr. Smith, do you want to uh, summarize those? Um, yes, we have two, uh, two openings on the Board of Health. Um, Jerry Wayne Turner and Sylvia Chapman have volunteered to serve it again. Okay. Motion to approve. Okay. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. The second appointment is on the Zoning Board of Adjustment, and Timothy Johnson II has volunteered to serve. Mr. Chairman, I would make the motion that uh, Mr. Timothy Johnson II, uh, I nominate him to serve on the Zoning Board of Adjustments. Okay. Uh, motion uh, made by uh, Commissioner Bowles. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Is there any unfinished business that needs to be addressed for the good of the order? There being none, we move to the public comment period. I believe we have one uh, citizen that is registered, uh, Shirley Huffine. If you'll please come up and uh, come to the podium and uh, please state your name for the record. Uh, Thank you for listening to me on this situation. You, you may want to pull your mic down a little bit there. Thank you. This is a small uh, request concerning some of the ones that you've all, all heard before. But this has been in my mind for a long time, and I'm trying to figure out how to go about getting this situation. We moved to Statesville in 2000 from Mooresville, and um, we have a little dog that's very hyper, he loves to run, he loves to play, and we have been having to take him to Cornelius, to the uh, Ramsey Creek Park, and I'm going about twice a week, which with the traffic and all of that stuff, it's taken me about an hour and a half, and I know this doesn't seem like a big thing to you all, but when I'm down there and I tell people I have to come all the way from Statesville, they say, you know, you don't have a, a dog park in uh, Statesville. And I said, no. Well, I called the mayor um, the 1st of May, and I talked to uh, Mayor Coutte, and he told me at that time, that was before the primary, and he told me that he did not have a dog, so he really didn't think it was that important situation. And um, I told him that it was far away, and uh, he promised me at that time that he would, uh, he took my name and my number and told me he would call me back and that he would check on the environmental situations of what would take place if we had a dog park. And I never heard from him. And so then I was, uh, when I went to vote, I talked to Mr. Mallory and um, he came up to me and I was talking to Steve Ellis about a dog park. And I said, what are my chances? Of, well, who do I see? Who do I talk to? And you told me that I could come to the, the commissioner's meeting and present this to you all and um, tell you that uh, this, you know, to some people it may not seem important, but when I drive that far, and with the traffic the way it is, and there's a lot of people. I know when I'm down at Ramsey Creek, sometimes there are around 25 dogs down there just playing, and everybody is taking care of their dogs. They have to be um, have all the shots and all that. I know there's legal things that has to be done, but it's something that I think would benefit um, our county or maybe the city or whatever, just something that we could have to um, to be enjoy, I know there's a lot of parks in Statesville that you walk, but 
some dogs need more than just walking. And uh, I know when I go to uh, McAnderson Park, I see a lot of land there that just seemingly is there wasting. You know, you can walk around and all these other parks. But um, I would just like to uh, ask you to just think about it and see if something could be done about maybe not now, but in the future. I know you're trying to improve Idle County and on some of the things that we've been needing. And um, I would appreciate if you would just think about it and see if it could be done. And I appreciate you listening to uh, my request. Thank you, Ms. Havine. Uh, any uh, questions uh, from members of the board or comments? I think this is a matter that, you know, um, being a city resident, uh, you know, there's some concurrent jurisdiction between being a citizen of the county and a citizen of the, of the uh, muni any municipality. And uh, the level of services generally given by uh, cities is higher than that of a county, which is focused primarily on uh, essential services. And uh, one of the reasons that people choose to live in an incorporated area is to, to have a higher level of service and to pay a corresponding higher rate of tax uh, for that uh, service. Um, there is, uh, you're not the only person that has a dog that uh, needs to be walked and you'd want a safe location to do that in and one which uh, uh, you can uh, let them run. You know, we're blessed in this county with a lot of unincorporated areas and a lot of farmland. And, you know, it would seem to me that uh, even, even in the market that, there, that some enterprising landowner might uh, take a corner of a pasture and fence it off and say, you know, I'm going to charge admission for, uh, to a uh, to a, for a dog park here. And I don't know what kind of uh, zoning uh, issues they may run into, but I would uh, ask our county manager to... Uh, discuss these issues with the Parks and Rec uh, Department and, um, and also the Planning Department and just see, you know, what kind of uh, options may be out there uh, that obviously can leverage the resources we already have as opposed to spending money on uh, creating a dog park. Uh, but you may be able to meet some citizens' needs at a fairly low cost and low effort, uh, it just may be a matter of uh, working through some legalities. And uh, so uh, I would refer that matter to our staff to uh, investigate. And uh, we have your address. If you can get us an email as well, then uh, they can respond to you and uh, let you know what's in the realm of the possible. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Alfire. All right. Is there any new business come before the board? They're hearing none. Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, your report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to pass down um, a spreadsheet and a map. This is a follow-up from a conversation that took place at our retreat this last Friday. And... I'll let it get down. This is information from Malia Miller, our tax assessor, and it's basically a breakdown of the number of qualified sales in 2014, uh, the average sales price, the median, median sales price, and the average square footage of the home that was sold, and this is by township. So that's what's shown on your uh, spreadsheet, and there's a corresponding township map. And this is for your information, but... Uh, I feel like this is a good indicator of um, growth in this county and obviously the values based on how she's broken this out of, um, of single-family residential in this county. The second item I have, uh, fairly minor, but I just want to make an announcement that government or county government offices are going to be closed next week for Christmas, Wednesday through Friday. Uh, however, emergency services will be operating uh, throughout the, the holiday and uh, will be business as usual. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. 
Uh, we will be moving into a closed session pursuant to General Statute uh, 143-318.11, subsection A5, concerning a real property purchase. Uh, will we officially adjourn after that or presently? I'll answer that for a point of order. Uh, if you would make a motion to go into closed session and then come out, we'll adjourn. Okay. Well, I'll entertain a motion to uh, move into closed session. So move. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously.
especially since you might be able to make a coin or two to offset some of the cost. For the record, in the closed session, uh, relative to uh, real per property purchase, uh, uh, there was discussion but no uh, formal action taken. Uh, this time, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Have a Merry Christmas and a happy and prosperous New Year.